With the new season about to get underway on Saturday for the Premiership, I'm going to go through my predictions for the new season. From 12th place to the Champions. At the end, I'll go through the goal scorer and stuff like that. Starting off, dead last, I think it's going to be Dundee. I think even though they won the Championship last season, the last day, I'll look at the squad. I don't think it's pretty much anyone near where it would be a Premiership level squad. I think that who they've added and who they've let go, it's pretty much going to be the same old for Dundee. They'll come up and they'll pretty much go straight back down. I do I think that they'll could be gone just about the split. Going into the last five or six games, I could see them like fifth about twelve to fifteen points adrift. I do I think this will be a season where Dundee are just gonna get scalped, they're gonna be the weapon boys. I'm saying that and we kick off our season away to them, so this video may come back to bite me in the arse within the first minute. That would be quite funny, but it would be typical of us. But I just, I don't see Dundee doing it. I don't see him staying up. I think the team I put above him could kind of test him a wee bit with being the shittest team in the league, but I think Dundee are pretty much nailed them to go down. I don't know if they're the bookies favourites to go straight down. I didn't even bother looking at that. But I don't see Dundee doing anything better than dead last. 11th place, I've got St. Johnson. Compared to last season, the squads got weaker. The last half of last season, pretty much, was dog shit. I don't know how many games they won. I think pretty much they would have probably scored more goals at away team's grounds than actually wins, or someone to take the piss like that. If just, if had a very poor link up, they're out straight away in the groups. If there's only two seasons ago, I think it was, they won the domestic double. And I think with Stephen, I think it's Stephen, Stephen McLean in charge, I don't think it's going to get any better. Yeah, I, don't, I think they've signed two players. The equipment's been wank. They've had a couple of players leave. That would have been like a right, bit of a iffy decision. I don't really see how they would survive. It's like I can generally see with them very much being against Dundee. I think they'll be f they'll be safe automatically. But depending on who's in the playoffs, if Queen's Park continue to do first season what they've done last season and they play each other, I could see Queen's Park beating them. Maybe if Dundee United fuck it up and they're like to not win automatic, they could face them, but fuck those. But I think the Lyson Johnson really, really strengthen between them and Dundee. But I think Dundee goes straight down. So Johnson probably down in the playoffs. If they do not improve. If they do, let's see. It's going to be tight up until basically the last like two or three games. Probably for who gets that playoff place. But I think St. Johnson this time around. Tenth place, I went with Ross County. Look at the squad. Not got better, not got worse. They stayed up just on penalties against Partick. Had to come back from three goals down on aggregate, basically. Uh, yeah, I think it was a 90 first minute goal that leveled it to take the extra time. And they were on penalties. Scraping it by against Partick Thistle. It'll be between them and St. Johnson for the playoffs. I can see Perros being between them two. Perros nailed on to the division. That will pretty much be there. The way that Malcolm McKay off his first season judge, got sixth place, just was a year by a couple of points, then almost got relegated the season after, which Jesus. It was the same for us, maybe I done the exact same. But for us County, I don't see them really pushing on. I could be wrong. It's right now the first of August. Still got the full, the full month to go for transfers. So Ross County could just wipe out and be like, no, what? Here's a million pound, let's go for it. To stay up. And to try maybe push for top six. Fuck knows. But, yeah, I think pretty much that's going to be your bottom three. I don't actually see 
and being much mail. Than that, well, we'll see what happens. Ninth place, I've went with Kamalik. I think they've added a few good players. I think that the way that Dave McInnes has improved the squad is good. I don't think it's enough to push for top six. Even though it's a ninth, we honestly like could be between ninth and sixth place, be about four or five points of jail, it could be. But I think Kelly, they're going to be more than comfortable this year. To pick up, I think it was pretty much almost all the points at Rugby Park. Probably well in to the 90% category. Not exactly sure, but I know they picked up a very big majority of the points at home last season. The exact same this season, but I think they'll be more than comfortable. I don't see them kind of struggling. Maybe a slow start to the season. I would say come October, November time, you're probably going to see probably a decent gap. I would say about like six, seven points maybe between ninth and tenth. And I think Kelly will probably be in around ninth. You'll float in around the top six probably towards maybe the Christmas period or where it's going to be about to go away for the winter break. But I don't think they're there just yet, but Second full season back in the Premiership. They also have to stay up this time again and kick on. But well, I think they'll be comfortable ninth this year. Eighth place, I put Mullow, my team. I don't, I think, after losing Van Veen, pretty much, if we kept them and lost Max Johnson, Sean Goss, that's pretty much it for the regular start of 11. And this is, they will get sixth place at least, maybe fifth. But we've lost pretty much. I cut this score 29 goals for us last season. No chance of replacing them. The ones that we have signed, Obika, obviously we signed him. Wilkerson, and this Theo Bear from St. Johnson. Yeah, I'm not confident at all, for striker wise. Still remember to be going for players, as I says, about two minutes ago. First of August, we don't know. Could still do it, but if we are able to. I think we could probably push for the top six late on. I think it's probably going to be like the way it was this time last season. I think we'll be more than comfortable to stay up, but I think that's pretty much there. They're in their boots. Who knows, we might get lucky and you've got one of the three strikers that we've got right now. Could just turn into Van Veen. Looking 2.0, but I very much doubt it from what I've seen early on. Seventh place, I've put Livingston. They have lost a few players without replacing, but it's Livy. For some reason, they can keep losing players. Losing the top goal scorer, losing their base. Defenders, like anyone. They will replace their base players, and they still push on. I don't think that there will be enough for top six this year. I think it's going to be between possibly us, themselves, and the team have put six. For it, but I feel we could maybe have a last ditch or we went to the last game of this regular league season last year between them, St. Mirren and Hips for that final spot, pretty much. And they just missed out. Could it this time around? Who knows? I don't think they will. I think the squads are probably just that little bit too weak where... Get a couple of injuries and they're pretty much fucked. They've not really got players that look to be able to step in to fit it. But I could be proved wrong. And if I am, they'll play. Moving on to the top six then. Six players have put St. Mirren. The squad has pretty much, I don't think, changed at all. Yeah, I've had a couple of players go out, a couple of players come in. But I think realistically, the squad is pretty much bang on the same. They got top six last year and finished sixth place. Can they do it this year? It's got, as I said a minute ago, I think it's going to be between us, Lovey, and St. Mirren. I think with them just having not really too much of a change around in squad, I think they'll be more than comfortable to do so. Stephen Robinson knows how to get results. He knows how to get a of his players. He's a former manager. I think he'll get in back-to-back top sixes this year. Fifth place, I've went with Hibs. They have strengthened, but they have also lost Kieran Nisbet. Could have went in January. That's went now. They came fifth last year. I think they'll do the exact same again for next for this upcoming season. 
I think it's going to be comfortable in sixth and fifth. I think unless they add in pretty much a proven goal scorer, which maybe if Adam Alfonso picks it up, maybe if Ayers Johan does, I think losing this bit without really replacing him, it's going to be a huge loss. But unless Aberdeen or Hearts severely bottle it, I think it's going to be fifth place and back to back here being finishes for Hibs, unless Hibs do Hibs and do what they've done under Neil Lennon and Neil get relegated. Fourth place, I've went with Hearts. I think pretty much for this season. Under Stephen Naismith, you see on the back end of last season, under Bobby Nielsen, under Naismith, the squad, I don't think it's actually been ripped apart. I think the only real player they've lost is Josh McGinley, and that's it. But I think it's at all. I don't see that squad pushing for third place to get a Europa League playoff place. I think they'll have to go through Conference League qualifiers yet again for next year. But, I think this is going to be a season where Hearts drop off a bit. I think they'll, if they don't raise the levels to what they were last season, or well, two seasons ago now, where they first stood comfortably, this could be a depressing season for Hearts. Where you're going to go to Tynecastle, and you'll probably get us, you'll pretty much get everyone, probably picks up a result against Hearts of Tynecastle. I could see Hearts pretty much not dead it. Like, I could see Hearts probably even dropping off their fifth if Hibs make one or two more additions. I could see Hearts probably not even going the season without, or the they didn't lose against this team, they didn't get lost against this team. I think everyone that plays Hearts will beat them this year. I could even see Dundee shit out as a result at Tyne Castle. So I think this will be a year where you'll kind of see the importance of a, an actual manager. I understand that Stephen A. Smith's first actual proper role, but you look at us under Stevie Hamill, that went tits up. You see St. Johnson and now under Stephen McLean, doesn't look good. But then you see Aberdeen with Barry Robson, that went the opposite way to where he took him to could be missing out on a top six to then third place and they're playing the Europa League playoffs, which I guaranteed European football until pretty much the new year at the least. But I don't think Hearts are going to really do anything. I can see pretty much third place just running away with it and being comfortable. And moving on to third place, Aberdeen. Talking about them, the squad is pretty much at the same level as last season. They made a couple of additions that look potentially promising, but I think third place is going to be almost nailed on. Unless they bottle it like they did. Well, nearly did under Jim Goodwin before he was sacked. Before he, where you see under Stephen Glass, where they're actually in contention of being in the relegation playoffs, almost, until like the last two games or something it was. I think with this squad, I think they'll be comfortable. I don't think any day catch them. As long as they don't fuck their own season up, I think it's pretty much going to be Aberdeen's to lose. I think by Robson's got them ticking. You could probably see the way they obviously got them to be able to take him into a Europa League playoff place for this season. I think he'll probably repeat it next season. I think by this time next season where we're talking about the 2024-25 season, I think your pair would be in the same place. I don't actually see anything being different to last season for the top six. Well, let's see, Aberdeen could bottle it, but I think the players are more than good enough and the squad's more than good enough to not do so. Second place, I've went with Rangers. I think it's pretty much going to be Celtic three in a row. There's Ward has got stronger in the attack, but I'm still looking at the fans and think, you lose Goldson, you're pretty much fucked. I know Balogun's back, but he's 33, 34, he's getting on, he's struggling with injuries, as you've seen, towards the end of Rangers, but 
I think that defence is quite weak. I think pretty much you've seen last season there was times of where they couldn't stop considering games. There were times that the defence would get bullied by being midget strikers or midget wingers. I can see that going again. They have made a lot of signings, but I don't think they're in the positions you need. I know you've lost Kent and Morelos, which you've replaced them. But you're not really replacing goals. You're not getting like, say, I said, 20 goals between the two, it's like 30 or 40. You're just maybe matching the goals or maybe just less. And the creative output isn't there. Midfield's okay, but I think it's going to be that defence is going to be testing of where what happens come December, January, February, when Celtic are up and running. And where they'll probably be right at it. Because it's got to be, you can't even drop your standards, obviously. Could do it last year, can't do it this year. First place is obviously Celtic, as always, it's the last team in the list. They've lost Posse Conquer to Spurs and Jota to Ali Tad, I think it is, in Saudi Arabia. It's pretty much, they got Randy Rogers back. They made a few decent additions, and then it's Paris is only Jota that's left. Yeah, that boy, they're a title, which was a surprise, but I think with the midfielders they have, I think they'll be comfortable. I think you've got probably, what, another two or three players that will come into Celtic. They've got Champions League football group stage-wise to look forward to. So it's probably going to be up to them. If Rogers gets doing what he done when he was last in charge of Celtic, I can see another domestic treble for them for this year at least. Maybe back to back and day three trebles in a row again when they did under Brendan Rodgers. I think when you look at the squad I think it's pretty much going to be one of those where it's going to be hard to actually compete unless Celtic shit the bed and absolutely fuck it. And moving on to the final wee bit so goal scorer, assister clean sheets Young player and player of the year. Top goal scorer, I'm going with Kyogo. You know, last season just, but I think a goal or two, I think he'll do it again this season. I think the way that Rogers plays, I think his power is going to suit Kyogo a bit more too, possibly. Power, she'll get crossed, he'll just, everything's going to be through him. He's going to be getting balls slung into him for all areas of the pitch without even question. This will probably be a season where he could probably crack 30 goals in the league and then probably moves on next summer for 30 to 40 million because you're just signing your contract to 2027. So, Celtic will probably go home for a big season so then if he moves on, it'll be for big money. Top of sister, I'm going with Matt O'Reilly. I think the way that Rodgers wants to play is more through the midfield. I think he's going to be one of the main players this year. I could see it probably being 15 to 18 assists. He will get, he's still quite young. I think he's 22 years old. I could be wrong, could be 23, could be 21. I think he's about 22. Same last season. I think this season, going into his second full season in the Premiership, I think you could generally be looking at this thing next year at 25, 30 million pounds for him to go down to the Premier League. Clean sheets. <clears throat> I think with Calabas, I think was your last season, I think with Aberdeen stepping up defensively on the buyer option, I think Calabas will pretty much be the one that you would want to actually go and win the Golden Glove or however way you'd actually say it. Young player, I think, is going to be Leila Bada. I think his lot, I think, under Bader Rogers, he'll pretty much play week in, week out. But he's not leaving. It pretty much means Dyson Mado will just go to the left, a bad on the right, and I think he'll pretty much win it. Because I think he's about 20 year old, 21. And I think the young player in Scotland is under 23 for some reason. I'm not exactly sure. But I think he would still qualify, and if he does, I'm going to say a badder. The player of the year, I think it's just going to be Kyogo. Top goal scorer, probably 10 assists, I would say. 10 to 12 assists. I think his power's got to be one of those where Celtic won three in a row. 
probably get another table and back to back of that. He's pretty much gonna just elevate Celtic again under Rogers. He will probably see a different Celtic this year compared to the last two seasons under Posse Coglu. But with that, that's the end of the video. If you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, let me know your predictions in the comments below. With that, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.